Okay, remember that they are changing my voice. This is my official stance on the cloud in the Bible. You know, the one Christ comes back on at the end of the story. And this is part six. Job 20. This chapter is so key, I decided to just put all of it in my notes. And I'm just going to read it read it to you and kind of explain it and again you're going to see what is overkilled in Job that the storm and the cloud they stand for God's warrior spirit that's not the main point of Job but it's the main kind of idea discussed that God's storm and warrior spirit are plaguing Job and he doesn't know why and people who are upright men who are his friends right he didn't yoke himself to wicked people right um, are discussing with him and they're right about a great many things but they're wrong about what's going on and they don't understand it either and Job is greater than them and that is highlighted as well so let's just shoot ahead real quickly to Job 36 okay when we get to Job 36 we're gonna um, talk about the lightning that God's hands are, are filled with Job 36, 32 says he fills his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark, right? He fills his hands with lightning and commands it to strike its mark, right? So it reminds me of that, that saying, say everyone was kung fu fighting. Obviously, God's martial arts system is not kung fu, but the song that says everyone was kung fu fighting, his, fast, his hits were fast as lightning. And of course, you have Thor, and he's just some kind of pagan Satanist deity. And you have Zeus, another pagan Satanist deity um, that the, the early Christians were aware of, and these deities were you know, persecuting, you know, these deities and their followers were persecuting the early Christians in very much um, demonic forms and, and systems that they, they represent. Um, those things aren't the true lightning of God. The true lightning of God, we see in Genesis 10, Amos 9, 7, we see that it's the Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order, okay? It is a certain expression, a certain type of martial arts that comes from Africa, that is called, you know, the offspring of Cush, and it's it's said to be embodied in Nimrod in the story, but it's really it's a spiritual heritage and not a uh, not one that migrated out of Africa. Okay, so Ham begot Cush, Cush begot Nimrod. Ham begot Cush, and Cush begot other people like Nimrod. And when all was said and done, the top martial arts ever possible is me. Okay, and nobody will ever be a valid uh, martial arts after I die. Okay, not in terms of in reality. Just um, in terms of their, maybe in terms of their their specific arts, which are being corrupted by the New World Order and so on and so forth. Anyway, but anyway, so let's get into Job 20. Job 21. Then Zophar the Namathite replied, My troubled thoughts prompt me to answer because I am greatly disturbed. I hear a, a rebuke that dishonors me, and my understanding inspires me to reply. Surely you know how it has been from of old, ever since mankind was placed on earth. Another version of it is, or Adam was placed on earth. So ever since Adam was placed on earth, or mankind was placed on earth, that the mirth of the wicked is brief, the joy of the godless lasts but a moment. Though the pride of the godless person reaches to the heavens, and his head touches the clouds. Okay, just like in Revelation, in Revelation 18, the sins of the people who are arrogant enough to rebel against God, right? False pride. Okay, and they rebel against God, their, their sins are said to reach to the heavens. So their head is like their sins, it touches the clouds. Okay, And remember, the clouds are said to be under God's feet and His Son's feet in uh, uh, Psalm 18. Okay, So His head touches the ground, but they're being trampled by uh, God Okay, as they turn on each other. You know, there's no honor among thieves, as the saying goes. He will perish forever like His own dung. Right, They're being compared to... S-H-I-T, which is like the word S-H-E-T, which is the um, set's name scrambled. S-E-T-H, okay, which goes back to Horus versus Set and this the, the ancient wisdom of the Egyptians, which is being praised at various points in Isaiah. But they say, hey, if you're not actually right with the right Pharaoh, that your, that your wisdom is garbage. Okay, so they don't rebuke Horus in the Bible. They elevate him, okay, but his true form. Okay, however, you know, it's a very dangerous thing to assume that if you research about Horus, that you're going to find the way to heaven. It can't be done. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not 
researching about Egyptian mythology. I mean, feel free to do it. Keep in mind there's a bunch of Eurocentrics and Afrocentrics and various LGBT cults and groups that try to lie to people, governing uh, class corporations and, and their scientific departments and, uh, sci and Eurocentric allies. Okay, Keep that in mind. Okay, The Egyptian... Um, the studies into Egyptian mythology these days is unbelievable hogwash. I've been looking into this stuff for years, and I've seen it change over the years, and their stories change to be completely political and, and sexual and just disgusting lies that are coming from various groups of people these days in regards to uh, Egyptian history and, and what they claim is their religion. Just just way off the mark. Just just, just disgraceful as hell. Okay. Um, and, of course, they're, they're famous for fabricating evidence. That's what Eurocentrics have done since anyone can remember. Okay. Uh, where were we here? Okay, so he will perish forever like his own dung. Those who have seen him will say, where is he? Like a dream, he flies away, no more to be found, banished like a vision of the night, right? So the righteous go somewhere else, and they say, hey, the, the wicked are in the realm of the dead suffering, but going toward hell, and, they, and the righteous go to paradise, right? The eye that saw him will not see him again. His place will look on him no more. His children must make amends to the poor. His own hands must, be, must give back his wealth. Now, what can you do when the righteous one is gone, attractive females that represent basically every group on the planet had shunned them and that's an unnecessary overkill that means that nobody can be right with god after my flesh dies how do you make amends to the poor then how do you you know what the, the other the, the poor pirates who cheated me too the offspring of the worms who cheated me too? I mean, stupid so there's no way for them to be right with god after my flesh dies because it says right here in job 2010 his children must make amends to the poor for what the wicked man did his own hands must give back his wealth. Did we see that even in America with slavery? No. Okay, and they, they, they try to make black people as criminal as they could possibly make them. And, and brown people and everyone else they did wrong, they try to make, it, make them as criminal as they could be. Okay, so they can then say, hey, if we give them the money, they're going to squander it. Wow, that was fucking brilliant. That was stupid as it gets. Not proud to be part white because of thinking like that. The youthful vigor that fills his bones will lie with him in the dust. Though evil is sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his stomach, it will become the venom of serpents within him. Okay, so his food, right? So they're like, oh, yes, our El Gan Gates, oh, oh. And we see today how the people have really taken such a fall. People don't have the human worth they used to have before. And I'm not referring to some white supremacist worms who were like, yes, 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 our culture. Okay, that, that's garbage. He will spit out the riches he swallowed. God will make him his stomach vomit them up. He will suck the poison of serpents. The fangs of an adder will kill him, obviously, figuratively speaking. He will not enjoy the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and cream. So you can see at this point, right, Jeremiah, okay, Ezekiel, okay, Isaiah, Job, Psalms. You see how it's figurative speaking here. And it refers to a martial kind of conflict between God and the Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order and the rebels who refuse to give the righteous man his place because they don't want to be with the oppressed and the poor. They want to side with the privileged and the token minority privilege and so on and so forth. Okay. What he toiled for, he must give back uneaten. And he will not enjoy the profit of his trading where it matters most in the spiritual realm. For he has oppressed the poor and left them destitute. He has seized houses he did not build. Surely he will have no respite from his craving. He cannot save himself by his treasure. Nothing is left for him to devour. His prosperity will not endure. In the midst of his plenty, distress will overtake him. The full force of his misery will come up, down upon him. Will come upon him. Excuse me. When he has filled his belly, God will vent his burning anger against him and rain down his bows on him. So when he has filled his belly, God will vent his burning anger against him. And he will rain down his bows on him. You see here with the Western culture, right? They have stolen so much, and they have controlled sexually. At one point, they had, you know, they coined the term eugenics, right? In the in the 1800s, late 1800s, 1883 or so, if I'm not mistaken, and that was a scientific, the idea of scientifically controlling reproduction. Obviously, that means controlling sexual behavior and who sleeps with who and why. I mean, they have stolen so much. They've stopped at nothing to ruin everything. Though he flees from an iron weapon, a bronze-tipped arrow pierces him. He pulls it out of his back, the gleaming point out of his liver. Terrors will come over him. A to total darkness lies in wait for his treasures. A fire unfanned will consume and devour what is left in his tent. The heavens will expose his guilt. The earth will rise up against him. A flood will carry off his house, rushing waters on the days of God's wrath. On the day of God's wrath. Such is the fate God allots the wicked, the heritage. 
appointed for them by God. Not a profound martial art heritage, but the heritage of traitors. <laughs>